Welcome back. I'm Laura Flanders, and I'm very happy to welcome Kelly Doherty to our airwaves. Kelly, you know, is one of the directors of Iraq Veterans Against the War. She was a National Reserve troop from Colorado when she served in Iraq for over a year, came back, founded IVAW, and IVAW has been the voice, really, for dissident Iraq veterans speaking on the issue of the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. This March, on the eve of the five-year anniversary, IVAW, as they're known, will be holding what they're calling a new series of winter soldier hearings. What will happen? Kelly's here to talk about it. Kelly, welcome to the program. Hi, thanks for inviting me on. Winter Soldier, the name goes back to hearings in the 1970s. People may recall the participation of John Kerry in those hearings. Uh, It was a subject that came up during his run for the presidency. What happened then? And then I want to ask you, what are you going to do now? Yeah, well, I would say first that the term Winter Soldier actually goes back to the Revolutionary War and is a reference initially to the soldiers who stayed at Valley Forge over the hard winter fighting for the independence of the United States. And Thomas Paine described them as soldiers who stand up for the soul of the country in in its darkest hour. So that's really what we're trying to impress. And, of course, the idea of Winter Soldier testimonies was done back in Vietnam by Vietnam veterans against the war, and many of those same people who participated then in in the 70s are helping us and giving us a lot of support now. Um, But really what we're striving to do with Winter Soldier is to bring the voices of those who witnessed the occupations in Iraq and Afghanistan firsthand and let them tell their, their stories and tell their experiences about what it really is like to be engaged in an occupation. What will be the structure of the event? Well, we're going to go from Thursday evening until Sunday afternoon, and we're going to have panels um, broken down into things like how people react at checkpoints or home raids or detentions of civilians, um, and also focusing on the way that veterans are treated when they come back and some of the problems that returning vets face, and then also have a space for civilians to tell what it's like for them to live under an occupation. Mm. Now, one of the striking things of the Vietnam War era winter soldier hearings was the testimony that soldiers gave about their training, what they were trained to do, and how that had changed them as people. Will that be one of the subjects you're addressing? Yes, we're going to have a really broad range of of stories, but um, one of the main focuses of the Winter Soldier Iraq and Afghanistan testimonies is going to be how things that individual soldiers do on a quite frequent daily basis in places like Iraq and Afghanistan really are indicative of a system of occupation and from policies both explicit and implicit that come down from the top, like, for instance, the way that detainees are treated or the way that um, just random house raids going into people's homes, um, you know, at all hours of the day and night are just commonplace. And that kind of dehumanization and mistreatment that occurs on the ground level is really indicative of a policy of occupation that's pressed down and Um, given down to the individual soldier. Mother Jones magazine ran a cover story about the way soldiers who've been trained, for example, in detention and interrogation uh, have themselves been wrestling ever since. How are soldiers, as you understand it, finding ways to talk about this stuff? Well, it's definitely a difficult thing to to talk about this because, you know, when you share your experience, you also relive it. And for a lot of veterans and service members, these are really horrible things that they would rather not relive. Um, but at the same time, they feel like it is important for people to hear their stories and people need to know the reality of what's going on in in the name of the American citizen. And part of taking responsibility for that is knowing what the reality is. And that's why the voices and stories of veterans and service members are so important. Joe Stieglitz, the co-author, university professor from Harvard, recently produced a report in a book that put a price tag on the war in Iraq. At a minimum, $3 trillion is the number we're talking about. And if you factor in the cost of long-term uh, physical and mental care, 
it could be up to seven trillion or even ten. How are you going to be discussing the cost of war, and how do you even begin to assess it? One of our main goals is in Winter Soldier is to really expose and make people aware of and make people really think about the human cost of war, about what it does to our military when we send people into occupations that drag on and on year after year and send the same people back for tour after tour. And then they come home and basically have a very hard time getting health care, getting benefits, getting back on their feet. And what it's like for Iraqi people where pretty much everyone in Iraq either has a family member who's been killed or detained or been made a refugee or been injured. So it's really hard to say, you know, what the cost of that is. It's Winter Soldier, Iraq and Afghanistan. Now, the hearings will be broadcast on Free Speech TV, channel 9415 on the DISH Network. That's Free Speech TV, channel 9415 on the DISH Network. What about the media piece of this, Kelly? We're going to be broadcasting it um, live via satellite, and we have people across the country and even people in Germany and in Italy and London organizing viewing events where they'll get together and watch parts of the hearings live via satellite. We'll also be streaming it on our website idaw.org, so people can tune in um, on the web as well, and that'll be archived so people can watch it um, after the actual event. And they're also going to be streaming it on Pacifica Radio online um, with the audio. Finally, the last one of the last panels on your lineup here is a panel on racism and war. Why did you think that racism was an important topic to have raised at the Winter Soldier hearings? Well, so much of the abuse that happens is because of dehumanization of the Iraqi people, of the Afghani people, of an occupied population. And that dehumanization is part and parcel of a foreign occupation. I'm, I'm an, an idiot. An idiot. Fuck, Fuck this, this country. country. I mean, of course, it comes out on the individual level just because of the situation. And they said, Turkey, Turkey, I'm a hummer, Sherpa, Sherpa, Bakula. So I grabbed her little sister and put her in front of me. <laughs> and you know, it's not just on the individual level, it's really much more institutionalized racism. And well, I think it's throughout our society is that if we really viewed the Iraqi people or the Afghani people as um, equals and just as human as we are, then as a country we wouldn't be able to tolerate the kinds of things that they're having to suffer through. All right, Kelly Doherty, thank you. If people want to find out more about the Winter Soldier hearings, go to IVAW.org. That's IVAW.org. And look out for the coverage in your local independent media.